We're basically already starting to work on, on Llama 4, and our goal is to completely close the gap with all the others on that. Llama 3.1 is probably the biggest news last week. Meta is killing it with open source play, and looks like it is already working on Llama 4, which might drop end of year. But Llama 3.1 demonstrates really promising performance across multiple different capabilities like mass coding, instruction following. One part that I found people are not talking a lot about, but I'm extremely excited, is that the meta seemed to start really investing in the agent-related use case. They mentioned that they aim to not just position Llama as a model, but a system to provide tools that enable developers to build their own customer agents, as well as new type of agentic behavior. They have a public repo called Llama Agentic System, where they showcase the whole components of the Llama stack. It includes things like Llama Guard, which is a specialized model trained to moderate the content, as well as Prompt Guard to prevent the jailbreak, and Code Share to prevent insecure code produced by large language model. But the most exciting part for me, tool calling, because tool calling is probably so far main reason I have to use OpenAI because their model just way better at tool calling related agent use case. If you don't know what tool calling is, it is a concept introduced by OpenAI at the end of last year. It's basically a type of model trained to given a user task, predict what is a function that it needs to be called, as well as the input for this function so that we can take this JSON output to actually run the function and send information back to the large language model. It is different from the other type of popular agent framework like React agent, where we use a prompt to force large language model to always go through this process of thought, action, observation. They're both great approach for building autonomous agents, but tool calling has a lot of core benefits. You can actually support calling multiple different functions at the same time instead of doing one by one. And tool calling is generally better because all those model providers will continuously improve their model tool calling ability instead of optimizing for the React model. From the initial evaluation result, Llama 3.1 model's tool calling ability seem to be performed really, really well against other models like GPT-4 and Cloud 3.5 but the majority of those evaluation benchmark are kind of zero short tool use, which not necessarily represent the actual tool usage performance in real world, because it's fairly easy and simple to do zero short single tool usage. Like user have a question, what's the weather in Sydney? And you just predict to call one function, get a weather with location Sydney. But the real world agentic use case is a lot more complicated, like multi-turn tool usage, where the user's task cannot be completed just within calling one tool, it will require some sort of planning and reasoning ability to be able to break down a big task into small steps. And then based on the result of each step to predict and plan the best next action. Like if the user query is, I like hot weather and cheap fly, help me plan a trip that suits me the most at the moment between Tokyo and Bangkok. It will need to call the function for both Tokyo and Bangkok for get weather, as well as function get fly price. And based on the result of those four different function calling, generally thoughts like Tokyo seem to be the best option and then call different functions like book fly, book hotel, and book cars. And on top of that, this model will also need to do both those function calling plus conversation. So in the end, it probably need to generate a good report based on all those research findings. So all things are a lot more complicated than just zero short tool usage. But the good thing is that in the Llama 3.1 model, it seems like they do train the model specifically for those multi-turn dialogues. So if the query requires multiple tool calls, the model can write a step-by-step -step plan call the tool in sequence and do the reasoning after each tool call. One thing to note is that for smaller model like Llama AB, it can't reliably maintain a conversation alongside calling yet. It can only reliably use for zero short tool calling. While the 70B and 405B is more suitable for combined conversation and calling together. And Llama 3.1 also showcases the actual prompt that has been used to drive those tool calling ability. And this is really useful because that will help us to understand how does it work behind the scenes and you can take this to fine tune a specific agentic model. So normal prompt looks something like this. At the beginning, you will give some context about what are the tool names that the model has access to, as well as the actual tool schema, very similar to how the open AI function schema look like. Then they will give a model a very specific instruction about what kind of result to generate for calling a function. So at default, it is something like a tag function with the function name, as well as the actual function input details in the middle. And after that, it will generate tag called EOM, represent for end of message. So these two things together are kind of like a system prompt to instruct how the model should behave. And then you can insert a user message into a prompt. And based on all those information, the model will generate a function calling output based on the instruction it was given. And we can take this JSON output to actually execute the function. After we get the function result, we can send the result back by wrapped under a Python row. 
And based on the information, the model will generate answer. So this tool coding ability from Llama 3.1 is really exciting step for us to have an alternative other than OpenAI to have a really strong model for agents. So I'm going to show you how can you create agents with Llama 3.1 model to get a sense of how well it performs. But before I dive into this, I know many of you are interested in using AI to automate your work. But there's no clear playbook or roadmap of how can you actually adopt AI in real world scenario and overcome the common challenges and pitfalls. That's why I want to introduce you to HubSpot's free bundle called Five Essential Resources for Using ChatGPT at Work. It has a useful flowchart for you to think through what type of things that you should use ChatGPT versus the one that you shouldn't. And also a really cool template you can use when you use ChatGPT or other large language model application to making sure any of those AI created content is following your brand's voice and tone. You have an AI generated content refinement checklist to double check the work delivered by AI and making sure the content that you publish is actually what you want. And there's a full page checklist that you can easily use that all about adopting AI at work and a super comprehensive PDF guide about how can you use AI to supercharge your work productivity. And that including a section at the bottom where it covers a hundred ways of how top firms are using ChatGPT today, like market segmentation and target audience analysis, and provide recommendations for improving the website SEO. Each of use cases can either serve as a reference about how can you use AI to automate work or you can take inspiration to figure out what kind of things people are hacking with ChatGPT and you can build a micro AI SaaS product to serve this market. The link to this completely free resource is in the description below. Click on that link to get a free report today. And thanks HubSpot for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to how can we build a Llama 3.1 AI agent. But what type of use case should we start building with Llama 3.1? And here's a use case that Mark Zuckerberg has mentioned in his interview with Bloomberg. You know, there's almost 200 million creators on our platforms. They all are trying to build their community. People want to interact with them. There aren't enough hours in the day. Like, I want to make it so that every single one of them can easily train like an AI version of themselves. They can make it what they want. So it's almost like a, like a kind of artistic artifact that they're putting out there that allows their community to interact with them, but also gives them control over how that interaction happens. And I think that that's going to be great. And there's going to be millions or eventually hundreds of millions of those. So this where you almost have some sort of digitized version of yourself is a very interesting one because I can definitely feel the pain there. Because one use case that's adjacent to this digitized creator is a company knowledge distribution. For any domain experts who hold specific type of knowledge inside a company, how to distribute those information to all the other employees and team members is a really big problem. If we can build an agent to digitize some sort of domain experts in the company, it's almost like having your top performing employees always accessible to everyone 24 seven. And this problem also mentioned by Chmas in All In Podcast. If you have a Google workspace, my entire company runs on, on Google workspace and click a button where all of a sudden now, all of that stuff and all of my G drives, all of a sudden is trainable yep. so that the N plus first employee comes in and has an agent that's tuned on every deck, every model, spreadsheet, that's every document. That's a huge edge. Yeah, huge totally. Edge. Yeah. Huge edge. So I really believe that this is a exciting and very big use case. And the beautiful thing is that it's actually very easy and simple to build an agent that live inside your Slack that can consume all the documentation that are written by your domain experts using Llama 3.1 that is running fully on your local machine using Olama. And we can build this Llama agent that is not only doing knowledge retrieval, but also continuously improving itself when observing new knowledge and eventually automate some simple repetitive tasks, just like another team member or employee. So I'm going to show you step-by-step step how can you build such agent in the next five minutes. Firstly, we want to download the Llama 3.1 model on your local machine. And we're going to use Olama, which is a package that allows you to run those open source large language model on your local machine. So if you have Olama already installed, you can open terminal and type Olama pull Llama 3.1. This at default will download a B model, which should be small enough to be able to run on your MacBook Pro. And after it is downloaded, you can do Olama run Llama 3.1. Okay, so you can see this model is working on my MacBook Pro with pretty decent speed. So the next step is that we want to build a Llama 3.1 agent that exists in your Slack workspace and can be tagged to answer questions and automate tasks. And most importantly, distribute those domain knowledge to different employees and team members on demand. And to do that, we firstly need to decide how we want to train large language model with our private data. 
Commonly, there are two ways. You can either fine tune the LAMA 3.1 model, or you can build a rack pipeline. And there are pros and cons for each method here. Well, the fine tuning benefits is it's going to be faster, but also it's more involved process. You need to prepare a lot of data to make it work. And also the model's knowledge will be frozen at the time when it is trained. So if you have new data that you want to bring into the model, you kind of need to fine tune it again. Versus Rack is a method that's way easier to start and also support a scenario where you have a dynamic knowledge table like Notion or Conference very well. And this is the path I'm going to take for the Llama agent. And then we need to decide how we want to build this Rack pipeline. And traditionally, most of the time, people kind of start building the Rack pipeline by themselves using open source framework like Llama Index, Langchain, and open source vector storage like Chroma because it is easy to start. However, the tricky part of Rack is that there are thousands of different techniques you can try to make the Rack better. And this is actually a bunch of emerging fully managed Rack pipeline platform that is doing all those optimization for you. And also have benefits where it can schedule to automatically revectorizing the database. So whenever you add new stuff to your Notion or Confidence page, the index can always be keep up to date. And there are platforms like Llama Cloud, Carbon AI, and for my purpose, I actually don't want to manage this Rack pipeline. I just want to outsource to someone else. That's why I'm going to use one of the platform, Llama Cloud, which is a fully managed Rack pipeline platform built by the Llama Index team. And because the whole platform is built on top of Llama Index, so it is a lot more transparent to understand what is going on behind the scenes and fairly easy to migrate over if you're already using Llama Index. And they also provide playground for you to play with different combination between chunk size, pre-ranking, metadata filtering, and other techniques that has been optimized. So the first step is I want to turn my Notion knowledge base into a Llama Cloud Rack pipeline. So when I go to Llama Cloud, I can create an index. An index is like a data source. So I can give it a name called Notion Database, and then I can select the data source. It can be PDF file, which will connect to their Llama Powers, which is really good. Or it can support Amazon S3 bucket, Azure, OneDrive, SharePoint, Slack, Notion, and Jira. And the one I want to use is Notion. So it will ask you for a few information once the integration token. To get that integration token, you will go to notion.so slash my integrations create an app in Notion, select the workspace that you want to connect data to, and click Save. Then you will go to Integration Settings, copy over this internal integration secret, and paste it here into Llama Cloud. But one thing you need to know is that in Notion, after you set up the integration, you actually need to go to Page and Workspace where you want to give access to Knowledge Bar, click on Three Dots button, and choose Connect To, and select the app that you just created. Only after this, the application can have access to specific content and page that connect to the app can be retrieved from Llama Cloud. And you can also specify which specific database ID, as well as page ID, to scope down the amount of knowledge that you should retrieve. And in the URL, this is the database ID. Same thing for the page ID, you can just go to a page that you want to share, and you will see and in the page URL, the list of number unique ID here is a page ID. And after that, you can select where do you want to save the data. It can be fully managed or use PyCon or other data storage, as well as embedding model. It will start fetching data and indexing the whole Notion database. And then you can just retrieve information directly from this API endpoint very easily. And next is we want to connect this Rack pipeline into Slack. And to do that, we need to quickly create a custom Slack bot. You can go to Slack, click on Settings, and Manage Apps. Then click on the Build button on top right corner and click on create a new app. We will just do from scratch and give it a name, Jason Bot. Choose the workspace where you want to develop this app and go to OAuth and permissions. And I will add a few different scopes from read chat history in channel, groups, direct message, and group message, as well as add and read reaction to message, view people in the work and also send out message. So this should be enough scope for us to build a lot of interesting uh, interactions. Then we will try to install the app to your workspace, click allow. Then you will get a OAuth token that you can copy and use later. But for now, if you go to your Slack and try to add mention your broad name, you can see this bot already exists, but it didn't do anything yet. So next step is we want to connect this bot to Llama 3.1 model on your local machine via Olama, as well as build those advanced functionality like knowledge retrieval and learning ability. So our open Visual Studio code, our first is set up a .env file. This is where we restore all the credentials that we need from Slack, Notion, Llama Cloud, as well as Firework, which is a large language model inference service that can allow you to access like Llama 405 model. So Slack bot token is the OAuth token that you will get in OAuth and permission. 
Well, the Slack signing secret is the signing secret under the basic information here. And we're going to get the Slack bot user ID by calling a API endpoint. So I will import a few different libraries as well as credential we just added and create a function called get bot user ID. So this will test whether your Slack authentication is success. So I will open terminal and then do Python app.py. Then you get this bot user ID, which you can paste over to the .env file. And that also means the connection is success. So we can basically command out this part, then add a few new functions. So I will have one function called post message that allows the bot to post message back to Slack, as well as add a reaction to the message, remove reaction to the message, so I can create some sort of interesting interactions. I will also need a help function to, to get a username based on user ID, as well as fetch the whole thread conversation history. And in the end, I will create two event listener. One is when the bot is at mention, as well as when the bot receive a message. And in the end, I will set up a webhook endpoint for Slack to send message to us. So this is a very basic, simple function that every time when you receive a message, it will just reply back, yo. So now you can see that it is up running. We will also need to add another terminal and we're going to use ngrok. So ngrok is a service that can put our local running endpoint to the public internet. So I will do ngrok HTTP, which is the port that we set up here. So now you can see this endpoint has been set up properly. So next we want Slack to send us all those information whenever it's a new message. So I'll go to event subscription, turn on this enable event, and then you can paste in the URL. One thing to note is that for this endpoint, you will need to change a little bit to add this challenge response back for the validation. Otherwise this won't be verified. And then we add a few different events to listen to from app mention, message channel, message group, message IM and message MPI. So that the agent will receive message whenever it is at mention or some new message from existing chat that is already involved. Okay, great. So now we can give a test. I can go to my Slack and then add this bot, give a message. You can say it respond back with this message. So it is working well. The next thing is we want to start building an agent that can retrieve knowledge and respond properly. And to do that, I will create a new file called functions.py. And this is where we will create an agent. So I'm going to import a few different libraries. In here, I'm using the Llama index and Olama. So Olama is a package that allows you to run those open source model on your local machine. But I also import Fireworks, which is a large language model inference system that allow you to run Llama 3.1401B in pretty good speed. So I'll firstly create a large language model point to old Llama with a Llama 3.1 model that I download on my MacBook. Then I'll create a function called draft message, taking the latest user input as well as a chat history. And I'll create a one function called answer, which will take the user input and history, call the local model I'm running and get a response back, as well as run function call this answer function. And this should be able to connect Slackbot to this local model that's running on your machine. So I can just go to the app.py, import this function draft message, and then go to the app mention, replace the response from yo to draft message, passing on text, and same thing for the message event to call the draft message function, passing on both the text as well as chat history. And now we can do control C and run the app again. So if I open Slack now and do Bob slash hey, you can say firstly, it will add an emoji to my message as a nice little interaction to indicate it's working. And after the message generated, the emoji will be removed. It. So this agent is running now. So we have connected this to the Llama 3.1 AB model. And the next thing we want to do is connect to the knowledge retrieval that we set up on the Llama cloud. And firstly, I want to add a knowledge agent. So this agent will be able to call function like knowledge retrieval, get a response back and generate answer. So I will give it one tool called knowledge retrieval where I will, I will basically call the Llama cloud index and retrieve most relevant information back if the score is more than 80%. And I here also add one function called reflect. So this is kind of one tactic I found quite useful to force the agent to think a bit before it answers the question to either see whether the knowledge retrieved is actually useful or reflect if there's any additional information can be provided to the user. And then I'll convert them into tools. But here, because I'm using the AB model, which is not that capable for my experiment. So I basically just command out the reflect tool, just like I use the knowledge retrieval tool. And then I'll give it a system prompt and create a React agent. So here you will find that I'm actually using the React agent. The reason is because at this point when I'm recording this video, the tool core support doesn't seem to be that good. It will still output some kind of weird message from my experimentation from the old Llama tool call. That's why I still use React agent for now. But later as the inference provider like Fireworks actually support function calling properly, then you can just swap this with OpenAI agent or function calling agent. 
So this is pretty much for the knowledge agent. But on the other hand, I also want to add a aux trader agent who will be looking at the user query and then decide whether the question can already be answered or it requires additional knowledge. Because if something can already be answered, I don't want the agent to actually run the knowledge retrieval for a simple query like hi or hey, but only do the knowledge retrieval when it's needed. So we basically have this kind of three steps in our agentic workflow. Aux trader agent to trade arch and then delegate to either answer agent or knowledge retrieval agent. I will make a change to the run function. I will set up its retry because sometimes I found AB model is not that great as it can hallucinate the result and output something not those categories. I will run this orchestration agent first, get a response back. If the result is not retrieval, then call this not retrieval agent. But if the category can be answered directly, then just call Olama right away and return response. So I can save this, run the endpoint again and open Slack. At Bob, who is Jason's wife. So I can see the agent is working. So you can see the orchestrator agent categorized as knowledge retrieval. Then start running the knowledge retrieval agent. And the knowledge retrieval agent decide to call the function about Jason's wife and get a response back and give me the answer here. But if I just give a simple message like, hey, then will return can be answered and skip the knowledge retrieval and return the answer back directly. So this is a kind of simple knowledge retrieval agent we created. I do observe that AB model often is not that great. In terms of categorization, like sometimes it can categorize things wrong. And often when the context became a bit longer, it really struggled to answer question based on the knowledge retrieval as well. That's why I think you can use other hosted model on uh, fireworks or replicate, and then just comment out the Olama and still switch to bigger model like 405B. And with bigger model, I can also do some more sophisticated things like reflect as well. And the last thing I want to do is that I want the agent to be able to self-learning, which means it might struggle to answer some question, but if I come and provide some new information, I want it to be able to learn and remember. So next time it will be able to answer new questions. And to do that, I can basically create a new agent. If it detects this new information received, it can save the data to this notion doc and also trigger a sync on my Llama cloud. So everything will be up to date. And to do that, I will add two new functions. So add knowledge is basically a function that will call Notion API to add new information to this specific page. And it will take in FAQs as well as page ID. If the FAQ is string, then it will turn into JSON and convert that into the specific format that Notion API will accept. Then get the page ID and block ID and insert data to that page. So this is function one. The second function is sync data. After I add the information to Notion, I want to trigger the sync data on Llama Cloud so that it can vectorize again and get the latest information. Then I will add a learning agent who will be able to look at conversation, abstract and reflect what are the general knowledge can be saved for later, and then save learnings, which will add data to Notion and sync data on Llama Cloud. I'll create tools from those functions, give a system prompt, and create a new React agent. And then go to Austrade agent, a new category called new learnings, and move to the actual run function. Add one new condition. If the categorization is new learning, then delegate to the learning agent. And that's pretty much it. So I can restart server to get the latest version. And here, if I give a new question, hey, who is Barry's wife? And this is the kind of new information that didn't really exist in the Notion doc. So that it will answer back, sorry, I'm unable to find information. And then as a human, I can come in saying, Barry's wife is May. Then it will notice this new message in the chat. So here it is interesting that it seemed to fail to do this simple categorization. Okay, I think I might find the reason. This part of code is kind of duplicating the message because the latest history already includes the latest user message. So I can just remove that part for both the aux trader agent as well as the answer. And I will make a quick update. For aux trader agent, I will remove the user input. But for the knowledge agent, I will do this to get all the chat history except the latest information that we pass on by user input. Okay, so this time it's successfully categorized as new learnings and save data point. If I open Notion, I can see this new information saved that Barry's wife is made. So next time, if someone asks the same question again, it will be able to answer. So yeah, this is pretty much a simple self-learning Llama 3.1 knowledge agent that exists in your Slack that you can interact with. I'm really keen to see what kind of interesting AI agents and new agentic behavior you can start creating with Llama 3.1. On the other hand, if you want to learn more in depth about building AI products, I'm actually starting a private community called AI Builder Club, where I'm going to share more detailed code breakdown of every single project I show in the video, which should cover a lot more in detail of every single step and basics. 
So you can actually dive a lot deeper and copy the code if you need. And also, and also leave comment for any question you have so I can prioritize answering them. On the other hand, every month I will do a deep dive with some top industry AI experts to share pragmatic experience of building production-ready AI applications or even workshop to learn in a more interactive way. And I'm also working with some core AI platform to provide credits for you to use. So I started this with aim to provide more enablement for you to become better AI builders. You can click the link in the description below to join this community. I'll continue sharing new learnings and explorations I did with those latest model. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and also comment below for any new topics that you want me to explore. Thank you and I'll see you next time.